everybody, Dr. Rob Silverman here, Proven Health Alternatives. I have two esteemed colleagues, Dr. Sam Welton and Dr. Greg Robbins. I'm excited about sharing some health breakthroughs. As everybody knows, I'm all into health detectables. And full disclosure, Greg and I are personal friends, and he brought this new item. I'm wearing it right now because I'm a big believer in a health detectable. It's called the SunAware. And everybody's going to want to utilize this by the time we're done with the podcast because the science is there and it's all about prevention. And in addition, I'm going to pile it on. I love your mission statement. You guys want to help people in health. So San, tell me a little bit about what SunAware does. Hi, Rob. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, basically, we are dealing with uh, UV radiation in the sunlight. And most people know that it causes quite some negative health effects, such as skin cancer and sunburn. Uh, but what fewer people know is that the sunlight is also responsible for many positive effects on the human health, such as vitamin D production and others, which we can touch on later. But the main problem is that humans don't have any means to detect UV radiation directly. All we can do is once it's too late, we realize the usually negative effects of sunlight in, in the form of a sunburn, for example. And, and that's just because the visible spectrum that our eyes can perceive, it just ends above UV. And below that, we have UVA, UVB, these things we cannot perceive. And that's what we measure. So SunAware is a small device, this here. It measures, exactly, it measures the UV radiation you're exposed to and sends that to our SunAware smartphone app and helps you to manage your dose, basically making you aware of your UV exposure and making you to help informed and smart decisions. Fabulous. So it's just trying to ascertain really how much, which is great, because how do you know how much sun you should be exposed to? We don't know. We typically know that we've been exposed to too much sun when we burn. Now, Greg's got a great metaphor that really explains this, the sun aware. Oh, thanks, Rob. Listen, it's great to be here, by the way, and chatting with you guys. Um, you know, the way I, you know, and I'm, uh, you know, I was introduced as Dr. Greg Robbins. I, I do have a doctorate, but I'm not a medical doctor. So just to be to be clear with everyone. Um, but the way I thought of this was a uh, so-called Goldilocks metaphor, which is, you know, not too cold, not too hot, just right. So how do we get this is what I wanted to know. And you can see I have my SunAware device, which I use. Um, how do I get just the right amount of sun? Because I want to benefit. I want to get vitamin D. You know, I do listen to a lot of uh, podcasts and try to, you know, kind of help myself and learn. I listen to uh, Huberman and, and others and, and vitamin D is a big topic. So I want the vitamin D. I don't want too much. And as was said earlier, you can't measure it yourself. You can't just detect what is enough because it's working in ways you don't see. So this device is the way to get to that kind of magic Goldilocks point where you get just enough, not too little, not too much. Uh, and I think that's very compelling. Um, and I'm imagining other people listening might think the same thing. I concur. I'm going to piggyback on what you said. Vitamin D, just to add a little color, vitamin D should be called hormone mm -hmm. D. It provides a swath of health promoting functions, musculoskeletal, immune function. And the sunlight is the only thing that can stimulate vitamin D other than taking a supplement. So getting the right amount is a critical element. Now, the interesting thing, and here comes the setup for you, Sam, the sun aware is a UV tracker. It's also an app. So it's, it takes in the, you measures the UV rays and goes to the app. It's a sensor that can warn the body and measures that radiation in the sunlight. It goes to your smartphone, suggests protective measures on display, the total radiation dose that has accumulated over a day. Now, there's a lot there. It's so everybody knows, wow, you know, today's a bright, sunny day. Ow, you know, you got to be careful. The sun is glaring. But there are also instances on a cold, gloomy day that you're still being exposed and people don't take protection. So if you could expand on that idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
it again boils down to the basic problem that uh, we cannot perceive UV radiation and it's not always the same as you said. Um, on a cloudy day, you might get way less UV radiation. On a sunny day during summer, it's way more. But exactly how much, you don't know because it depends a lot on the atmosphere, actually the angle of the sun through uh, which layers and of air the UV rays have to travel through. And also then the composition of the atmosphere determines how much of which wavelengths are blocked. So in the end, just something or the, the remainders actually arrive uh, on Earth and affect our skin. And because it's so difficult to actually estimate that, we have some kind of UV forecasts that try to do that. But all these will do will again just give you what if you are standing just completely exposed somewhere outside, then we have pretty good models to forecast that. But the main thing is that you as a human, you walk around and sometimes you're in the shade, sometimes you're in direct sun sunlight, and then there's cloud near sometimes over overhead or so that will block parts of it. So basically getting your real UV exposure, especially the accumulated exposure, is something that is impossible to forecast for a single person. So that's why it makes sense right. to actually measure that on your body. If, if I could, Rob, if I could jump in and just add to that, you know, I think, again, from my layman's perspective, um, there's two interesting takeaways there. You know, one is we all tend to think about the sun as a sunny day. You go to the beach. Some people like to put oil on their skin. Some people put sunblock. People have different ways. But that's kind of our association with the sun. It's a sunny day. We're going out to swim and we need to think about it. But in fact, you know, what this all suggests is that, no, that's not the day you need to think about it. You need to think about it all the time because it's always there. It's always present. Sometimes it's stronger than you think. The second thing that I think is quite interesting about that is it's not it's less specific to location and climate. Because again, when we think of sun, we think of Miami, we think of San Diego, uh, people sitting in Minnesota, with all with all respect, um, you know, have less maybe thoughts about sunny days or they welcome sunny days. Um, and the, the point is, it's just as relevant for people sitting in darker, you know, less sunny northern climates as 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 very sunny climates. And I think that's a really important thing. You know, if, if you sit in that kind you know, don't tune out. This is this is relevant to you. Without question, my ability to uh, travel around the United States and lecture. Mm. In interestingly enough, you'll see a lot of people concerned about the sun wearing a hat, sunglasses in, like you said, San Diego, whereas Minnesota, it's kind of freewheeling because, you know, it's just a colder hemisphere. Uh, that said, you know, really to put together what you guys were saying about the vitamin D. So that's a critical element. But Sam, you, you touched on the skin. The skin is the largest organ in the body. It is our first line of defense in immunity. If we damage our skin, we've damaged our immune system. Also, with this rampant idea of anti-aging now, uh, longevity, if you will, you know, damage to the skin, wrinkling to the skin can lead you down that slippery slope. Why is it difficult for us as humans to truly understand how the sun is affecting not just us, but our skin? What's going on? Yeah, um, because it's a rather complicated invisible process and what you have when you're exposed to UV radiation, you actually have different wavelengths that are hitting your skin and depending on the wavelengths, they are penetrating deeper into your skin and also having different effects. So closest to the visual light, we have UVA. UVA is mostly known to actually give you a little bit of a tan, but also to give you melanoma skin cancer if you have prolonged exposure over a long time. Um, it will actually cause that. And it will do so through an indirect mechanism in comparison to UVB. UVB is actually just after UVA, slightly shorter wavelength. UVB will penetrate the skin less deep, but these are higher energetic rays. And they will actually directly damage 
uh, your genome in the skin cells and kind of preventing either uh, the proteins from being produced then or even uh, causing modifications in your genome that are will stay there over a long time and uh, UVB radiation is known to cause sunburn but also the other types of skin cancer commonly known as white skin cancer so BCC and SEC are caused by UVB and then there's the way lesser known part UVC which usually we don't have to care about because all of that UVC radiation is normally just absorbed by the atmosphere. So it doesn't even get to Earth and we don't have to worry about it. And that's a good thing because UVC is way more aggressive. However, one thing, you can get it on Earth if you are welding. You know, these uh, welding torches, they actually emit a lot of UVC, but... Um, just to add to that, SunAware is not made to actually measure uh, UVC from welding torture. So please don't just protect yourself if you're welding. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. When we're exposed to the sun, melanin comes out? Yeah, that's uh, also, it's an interesting effect of how our body um, has some kind of built-in protect protective measure. So these are pigment cells in the skin that are produced when we are exposed to sunlight. And what it does is actually by uh, absorbing UV light afterwards, it will help us to deal with future UV radiation better. And that's what we see as a tan. So the more of these melanin uh, we have in our skin, the darker our skin looks. And this can give us a natural uh, UV protection factor of let's say two to three, maybe four or so, a pretty low one if you compare it to sunscreen, but it gives us some kind of natural sun protection. If we uh, get, for example, early spring sunlight or so to give us a slight tan. So there's a lot of benefits to managing, modulating the amount of expression that the sun hits the skin. So I, I think one of the missing links that I'd love you to expand on is how does it let us know? Meaning, is there a beep, the app, that kind of stuff? I mean, is, is it a ring? Is it like an alarm that Greg loves so much to hear every day? Or is it, you know, just something that comes on like your heart rate? Yeah, basically what we wanted to do is when we started the development, we really wanted to make sure that we what we develop is something that people want. And what we quickly figured out is that we have to make a product that is not obnoxious. So that's what we're trying to do. We try to get out of your way when you don't need it. Basically, there's a whole lot of settings where you can set um, your skin type, you can set it to how sensitive your skin is, and then you can enable different kind of notifications uh, that specify in which situations you would like to get uh, reminded to do something about your sun exposure. Uh, one example is the day dose that your skin has absorbed. So the whole accumulated UV dose that your skin was exposed to during that day, if that reaches a certain limit, your phone will vibrate or beep, depending on if you have set your phone on silent or not. Um, similarly, there's also another notification that will let you know if you are in danger of reaching your daily maximum in 20 minutes or less. So that can be useful. For example, if you go outside at lunch, you just sit in the sun, not thinking of anything, but you're wearing your sun aware. Sun aware will register. Oh, if actually Rob will keep sitting here in the sun for 20 minutes or more, he will quickly reach his limit. So again, app issues a quick notification telling you, by the way, you might reach your UV dose limit in less than 20 minutes. Maybe you want to move in the shade. Now, let, let me let me just inter interject for a moment because something that may not be clear to everybody um, is when you mention the app letting you know things. Um, by the way, you can go on lots of weather apps and you get the UV measurements in the atmosphere, right? So you can actually see what the UV is. 
this is not what we're talking about. So Sunnyware, and maybe Sam, you want to talk about this, why this is personalized to the individual who's using it. And that I think would, would give people a little better insight into why this is really powerful. Yeah, you're right. This is an important distinction because what we are used to being communicated in the area of UV is the UV index. And the UV index is basically a measure of sun intensity. But what actually harms your body or also benefits your body is usually the accumulated UV. So UV over time. Mm. That means, let's say, we get a UV index forecast of five for noon. So usually these numbers that you see, what they forecast is just the maximum that is expected on that day. When we get a forecast of five, that tells us how strong or how intense will the sunlight be at its maximum on that day. But it doesn't give us any information about the actual damage or benefit we do to our body because all of that depends on at which times and for how long we are exposed to the sun. And then in addition to that also, how we protect ourselves. If we actually stay in the shade or if we are wearing sunscreen or all these things. So differentiating between the intensity of the sun and actually the accumulated dose that your body is exposed to over time is crucial there. There's, there's, there's an additional distinction here which is not only is it accumulated versus intensity, but Sam, the whole point is it's personalized. And I'm, I'm trying to get you in this direction because you've created this wonderful interface that personalizes this deeply to every person. So maybe just say a word about why it goes to the level of the individual. Yeah, yeah, good point. Um, so it does so in, in two different ways. One way is something that I have quickly touched on before, and that is that everybody's behavior is different. And that's also what makes the biggest difference in terms of smart sun protection or smart awareness is that how are you behaving? At which times are you going outside and do you stay in the shade or in the sun? So that is the first thing that is very personal. No forecast can actually predict that. And it makes sense to measure directly there. The other way how it's personal is really that uh, when you set up the app, it will ask you a few questions about your body. And that is mainly on how quickly you tan and how quickly you burn when you're in the sun. And based on these answers, our app will make an initial guess of your skin type, which is just some kind of scale from very sun sensitive, sensitive skin to actually very, let's say, dark skin that is way less sensitive to the sun. It will put you somewhere on that scale. And then that again defines your daily maximum dose limit that you can reach. And of course, because this is just based on a few initial questions, that's something that it's a rough estimate. And by just wearing it initially and seeing, okay, it's notifying me too quickly or too late, you can always then adjust that slider to put it perfectly where your skin type, type is. And with time, the app will be more and more personal exactly to how much sun you want or actually your skin can take. What Sam's saying is what really um, compelled me to want to join forces with Greg. It's individualizing and personalizing healthcare health prevention for each individual. In addition, the mission statement was even more than compelling. I mean, I, I, when I when he brought it to me and I got up, I was like, let's go. You know, I was ready for a 40 yard dash. Greg, if you could, could you speak a little to the mission statement of the company and the fact that Swiss based? Yes, well, those are two different things. They're definitely connected though. So the, the, the origin story which we always love. The origin story of this product is the founder, who's you know who's a very dear friend, uh, somebody I know many years. Uh, his name is Stephen Kraft. He's originally um, from the Bronx, like I am, by the way, um, and you are. Um, and Steve has lived, you know, for many many decades. I don't want to date him, but he uh, he's lived for many decades in Zurich, in Switzerland. I live in Geneva. Sam is also in Zurich. And Steve had an epiphany um, in the middle of the night, apparently, where he woke up and thought, 
we need to do something about ultraviolet sun rays because there's a real potential uh, for problems in, in, for people both with cancer and other skin conditions. And I want to do something about this. And in particular, I want to do something to help children who are put out in the sun and maybe don't know better and then eventually have to deal with the consequences of that. So this was uh, some years ago, perhaps Sam will correct me and tell me how many years ago exactly, but at that point, Steve told me about it. Um, and with my kind of business entrepreneur hat on, uh, I joined as an advisor, which I've been since to the company um, and a big supporter of this. And I'm just very, very pleased with all the progress I've seen and all the great work that's been done. So that's that's the origin story, was initially to help people. This was not about creating some sort of product that was, was commercial, um, although there is a product now, but it was really about how do we address this growing problem in the world. Um, and uh, Steve, you know, to his credit, saw that, found Sam, who had a lot of experience in this area and who does have a real PhD in the in, in relevant related engineering areas here. Um, and, and the whole thing came together. The last thing uh, I would add to that is the Swiss angle to this, because we're all here in Switzerland. Um, you know, I not long ago became a Swiss citizen, which I'm very proud of. And why does that matter? Well, it matters because Switzerland is about a number of things as a country and one of the strong values is about quality very strong value on quality very strong value on risk aversion the swiss are very cautious so when they create products and they create things um, you know they they really um you know put a lot of care into it being well designed um you know switzerland by the way has a very large pharma biotech corridor more up in the kind of basel area but it's a very uh it's one of the leading countries actually i take that back it's probably the leading country in the world on on patents per capita so innovation is very strong here in switzerland so when you say you know innovation quality um and risk aversion those are pretty good uh features to create a health product to protect people from this hidden uh potentially damaging uh, ultraviolet radiation. So that's that's part of the story. We we also just to finalize, you know, this Bronx uh, origin of Steve and myself. There is an there is a very American kind of can do, uh, and I know Sam really appreciates this can do attitude of you know think think big, you know have have big plans. Uh, and try to realize them. That's not a very Swiss thing, by the way, but it is a very American thing. So you get all the best of all these worlds. Greg, that was a very eloquent response. It compels me to want to get oh, involved. <laughs> That's great. And of course, when you bring up the Bronx, you know, that, that brings up that old uh, heartbeat, if you will. Um, but something I want to touch on, five ways sunlight boosts your mental health. Number one, it reduces stress levels. Two, it regulates your circadian rhythm and improves sleep quality. So critical. Nothing's better than a lifestyle hack than sleep quality. Um, it also stars off seasonal affect disorder. And you may want to talk about that a little bit. I've seen a lot of people suffer from that, you know, gloom and doom. I think Greg can give a little bit uh, background on that, you know, having gone to school in Oxford and living in Russia about possible seasonal affect disorder because of the weather. Um, yeah, I'm happy to. And also, you know, here's the big setup. It triggers the release of serotonin. So could you speak to how managing modulating the right amount of sunlight with that Goldilocks effect can harbor all this positives for mental health? Yeah, so probably just to, to say first, um, there there's a whole range of these effects um, also for mental health that you have mentioned. And just to make it uh, clear that SunAware at its current stage, we're dealing with UV and the, these direct effects of actually finding the right balance there. But of course, because half of our product is actually in the app, we're constantly improving the app, adding more functionality based on how people use it, what people are telling us. And exactly these things, for example, um, the regulating your circadian rhythm, which 
in return has a whole more of effects on your health, including your mental health, um, is an important part and is also largely influenced by the light, your light exposure and your light exposure, not only in the ultraviolet range. Uh, the other effect that you mentioned, the serotonin production, is also um, a different kind of way it works in our body, but again, also triggered uh, by sunlight. And that's something that most people intuitively understand, because it's something that so many people uh, told us, yes, I kind of am scared of the sun, but I still enjoy going outside. It just makes me happy. And that's just something that most of us feel that, yeah, going in the sun makes you happy. And these are just things where we have to balance again, okay, at which times do we go outside and how do we protect ourselves so that we get the best benefits? And a lot of that is also informing yourself about the effects and about smart behavior. But the other part, that's where we come in, actually, the knowing what you are exposed to. Yeah. And I mean, I would, I would add, uh, Rob, you mentioned, you know, I have some experience in different climates where, where the sun has a positive or a negative effect. I mean, let's remember, you know, in our common vernacular uh, words, like, you know, he has a, she has a sunny disposition or, you know, kind of, a, you know, it's part of our thinking, right? So it's, it, it really does infuse a little bit the way we look at the world. And, you know, I lived, uh, this is now over a decade ago, I lived in Moscow for a few years and, you know, which is generally, you know, not not known for its kind of year round sunshine. One of the winters I was there was particularly dark and we had a total of five hours of sunlight the entire winter. And there's a couple of, there's a number of effects from that, you know, on your, on your, on your well-being and on your, how you feel. So we bought, like many people did, a sun lamp. And this is quite common, by the way, in Northern cultures, uh, an actual indoor lamp. And we put it on our kitchen table. And in the morning with breakfast or something, we would put this on and it actually simulated the feeling of sunlight. And it was actually very good for your, for your, for your health. Um, I mean, also it's, it's true in those cultures where uh, if you don't have uh, snowfall, right? This is somewhat counterintuitive. When you have snowfall, it actually helps because it radiates more light. So when you have a winter where in, in dark climates where you don't have snowfall, depression levels, and this is certainly true in Russia, depression levels rise um, from the lack of, 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 of uh, sunlight and the lack of light period being reflected. So there are some kind of you to try what you know dark sides to this discussion right if you don't get enough enough light into your life so it's it's very real you know it's very real it's far beyond just uh people at the outset might have thought this is really just about you know going to the beach and not getting completely sunburned although that's important it's a much bigger discussion than that you know some valid points in what you experienced a uh, little background you know you're talking about the mood and trying to get the sun that's serotonin. So since serotonin is yes. released from sunlight, it's the mood. Yep. It, it makes it makes it invigorates us. It makes us happy. I mean, you gave a great example. It was very vivifying in that when you look mm. into a sun lamp, and as you said, many people do do that. You know, 50% of Europeans are deficient in vitamin D and even more so when tested at a low level for serotonin. Also, the circadian rhythm, which Sam talked about, very important. It's the idea of you being in tune with your environment and the circadian mm -hmm. rhythm really exemplifies the gut and the gut to brain axis, which is really what we're talking about with some mental disorders. So it just hit me. I think the sun aware, I'm going to call it no guessing because it's going to let you know mm -hmm. exactly how much sunlight you should, or I individually, different from Greg, different from Sam should have. Now, there's one other thing that I want to serve up. Uh, when I go to these hot places, you know, and I, I'm not a sun worshiper, but I'm able now to enjoy some more sun because I was afraid of, you know, damaging my immune system, being a health nut. Everybody's using these sunscreens, which is, I guess, great to keep the sun out. But how about the 12 chemicals that are going through this permeable layer called your skin? So it's almost paradoxical that people want to, you know, take in the sun 
avoid the sun, but they're not healthy because the uh, sunscreen. Here you've got that option. And I know you wanted to talk about that because in a lot of instances off camera, we've talked about how health markers have improved because of the utilization of the sun aware. Yeah, um, and that is something that many people are concerned because um, recently there has been more and more talk about uh, critical or sunscreen ingredients that are suspected to be harmful in the long run. And that's an important point to consider because in the end, when we apply sunscreen, we actually want to do something good for our body. So what I recommend to people is really that, first of all, there are still situations where you probably should use sunscreen. But if you use it, make sure you use the right one. And in many situations, you can also uh, just be smart or like actually stay in the shade, wear hat and these kinds of protections. So um, the other important point is also, of course, look up the harmful ingredients. Also, if you want to, we have a knowledge base on our website where we have a short article about sunscreens and the ingredients that are suspected of being cancerogenic. Um, have a look at that and then con just compare it to the list of sunscreens that still contain these. I know for a fact that EU has banned most of those and I think they still can be found in suns or some can be found in some sunscreens in the US. So maybe read a little bit about that. Mainly, as far as I've seen, are uh, the ingredients that are uh, critical are uh, benzones, something like oxybenzone or avobenzones uh, that you should look out for. Keeping that in mind is still that UV causes cancer. So if your decision is to not wear sunscreen in any situation, even if you're in direct sun in summer. So we know that UV causes skin cancer directly. And therefore you have to balance it a little bit, even if you cannot trust it, the sunscreen completely, maybe um, find something where you say, okay, that's an acceptable risk for me and uh, use it in situations where you cannot avoid direct sun. Greg, from the extremely educated consumer, where do you feel the benefits that you would want to convey to everybody listening come from wearing the SunAware device? Mm. That's a very, it's a very good question. Um, I think, by the way, it just it occurred to me. I think maybe you're reading my mind before you asked that. Just people may be thinking at this point: Is this something in development? Is this something that's going to be available at some point? Just to say, this is actually a real product. It is out in the market. It's been out in the Swiss market. The good news is it's coming very, very soon to the U.S. market. Um, there are people that are using it, that have purchased it. Uh, it's been you know, reviewed and looked at by medical professionals, by other control bodies in Switzerland. Maybe Sam can talk to this. So th th there is a, a real viable product which, by the way, is always being improved. So I think I hope at the end we'll also talk about what's in store for the future, because this is not the end of the story. This is a, a work in progress, and we're trying to make it better and better. But to answer your question, you know, I think for, for basically, what do people want? People want something that addresses an important dilemma they, they, they might face, you know, a health dilemma, which is how do I benefit from sunlight and yet not harm myself? And I can't see it. So how do I, how do I find that sweet spot, so to speak. So that's number one. How do I find uh, a product that's easy to use? Yeah, not complicated, easy to put somewhere where it's exposed to sunlight with a user-friendly app and interface. Three, how do I find something that's personalized to me? Because I'm different than you and I'm different than maybe my children and so on. So three, it's, it's deeply personalized. Um, four, it's it's affordable. It's 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 accessible to 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 pretty much everybody, I think. Um, and five and five, and this may matter to some people more than others, but it's also environmentally friendly and easy to sustain um, because of the genius of Sam. And maybe Sam, you want to talk a little bit about that last point and why this product. Um, 
you know, is is environmentally friendly and what's kind of you we think unique about it in this in this space. Yeah. Um, so when we started developing it, we talked to people to figure out what are their concerns uh, in the sun and what kind of device would be okay for them to use and which sacrifices are they willing to make and what is important to them. And we very quickly found out that there seemed, for, for many people, there seemed to be some kind of saturation of electronic devices that they have to look after and care for and charge and everything. So we quickly decided that, okay, we want to make SunAware a just set it and forget it kind of device, which means that you shouldn't worry, have to worry that you have still have to charge it or when you go outside, oh no, I forgot to charge it, you don't have it. And naturally also, um, because it only has to run in the sun, we thought, okay, why not put a small solar cell on it? And why not completely powered it with solar energy? And because also it doesn't have to be able to run at night and even indoors, um, it doesn't need a battery. And that was also a good thing because uh, when we started looking at that, um, wearing a device exposed to the sun with potentially a lithium ion battery as you have in all smartphones and smartwatches in there, these batteries are pretty sensitive, especially also to heat and puncturing or so, and can actually explode. And that's not something that you want to wear around your neck or on your wrist. So basically, because it can get hot, we were really happy when we uh, discovered, okay, no, we can make it completely solar powered. We don't have to put a battery in there. And as you can see, I have a, a SunAware board just here, maybe those who we'll see the images, see that the big glossy part on top that really most of the top part is just the solar cell that is actually powering the whole thing. Is it waterproof as well? Yeah, that's the other advantage. We didn't have to have any kind of opening for a USB charging port or something. So what we do is actually we use ultrasonic welding at production time to just weld two plastic parts together after putting the electronics inside, which means that you can go swimming with it and you can wear it in the rain, no problem. So just put it somewhere where it's exposed, on your back, on your collar, whatever. You can keep it there. It will run when it has to. One of the new things I was hoping, and Greg talked about it, that you would elucidate a little further is the idea of research. And I know you guys are on two specific tracks. So let's talk a little bit about research. And then after research, we'll come back. We'll have our go around. We'll talk about a little bit of a look to the future. Yeah. Um, this area of UV exposure and its health effect and maybe the more generic picture, actually the effects of light on human health. Um, of course, there's tons of research that has been done, but also just actually understanding and quantifying these effects, there's still a whole lot of work that can be done. And so far, when one wanted to do kind of a study about light exposure or specifically UV exposure, you either had to restrict yourself to a small sample size, so just a, a small study with a few participants, or if you have many, then you just had a short duration because just people had to wear these bulky devices that records their light exposure. And with what we have now, it's possible to research the UV exposure of, of a large number of people over a long time. And I think that opens up a whole new um, area of possibilities. And we as a company, we're always open to research collaboration. So what we uh, are doing is we are providing measurement devices to researchers that are doing um, novel research in this area so that we can actually further these things. And uh, the other aspect is, of course, the research that we're doing in product development, uh, because we know of these uh, various effects that different wavelengths ha have on the human body. Um, we are always exploring new features that we can add, be it in terms of uh, 
software features in the app or also next generation products that can offer um, even more insights. And that's the other part of research that we are pushing there with some of the effects that uh, you previously mentioned. And there is, just to add, there is a SunAware Institute that's in the making, you know, and uh, and that will become more developed over time as, as you know, people can appreciate uh, a lot of energy has had to go into simply the technology and the development of these products and understandings. Um, but over time, there'll be more attention also put into the, the research aspects of this. Um, beyond what Sam already alluded to, because clearly there's been a lot of research that's gone into the products and the products themselves have been provided for, for research benefits. But apart from that, there's a desire to create a body of knowledge, you know, which goes back to Steve Kraft's origin story, you know, which is I want to change the world and I want to get people to be more in control of the information and the control of, of, of the sunlight itself. I mean, to recap, the re what I see as a healthcare practitioner, number one, and, and Greg knows this very right. well, consulting on uh, large companies and things of that nature, the mission statement is, uh, it's, it's emotional. I mean, when you hear somebody wanting to help others legitimately and not worried right. about anything else, again, that's right. real compelling. But from a healthcare practitioner standpoint, to be able to utilize and generate vitamin D, protect the immune system, to t literally analyze and not guess. I mean, when somebody comes in, I have to take a blood test to determine their vitamin D level. It would be great if they wore what I'm going to call detectable. And yes, maybe the biggest thing is, and it is hot now, hot in the idea of being popular, it is a health detectable. I have my Aura ring here, got no affiliation with Aura. I do recommend everybody wear it because it gives health detectable information for the patient and the doctor. The same goes in here. Now, you glazed over the look to the future. Gentlemen, where do you think skin care and that combination of immune system is going in the foreseeable future? What do you guys see? So as an engineer, I'm looking at it, of course, from the technology angle of what can we do? What, how can technology actually uh, keep on improving and at the same time become more and more invisible because that's really what we're aiming at. So um, when talking to people uh, about the future or the future of the company, I tell them like our goal is actually that our sensor is invisible in the future. And that's one aspect that because we have a solar power device, we can make it smaller and smaller. We can actually as already now make it completely waterproof so you can think of uh, everyday objects such as uv protective shirts caps sunglasses or so that have a uv sensor already integrated these kind of things um, they seem to be possible and that's certainly something where we have this vision of ubiquitous computing basically some clothes or some Items on your body are just smart and letting your phone or whatever your central uh, computer device on you is um, about your body, but also about the environment around you. And in terms of uh, concrete uh, product, of course, in our case, we are looking at these effects, uh, for example, at of uh, circadian rhythm, like how can how can we help people there? Is there a way how we can help people to um, manage their circadian rhythm, specifically their light exposure? And that is a very interesting aspect that it has challenges in the software and in the hardware area. And that's certainly a part of the product development that we are currently looking at. Hmm. I, I would I would add just narrowly on the on the product side, you know, there's there's plans for the US. As we said, this has been kind of available in Switzerland and there's plans in the US. Um, and we hope people will will find this compelling and interesting. Um to me, you know, the the broader discussion, you know, um is is kind of this whole longevity area, right? Which is getting a lot of attention today and 
you know, I, I mentioned earlier Huberman, who obviously talks about it. Peter, Peter Atia, who's who's got his you know his recent book Outlive, which is which is a very dense but but very worthwhile read. Um, you know, it's it's a very hot topic at the moment, and I think about it, you know, uh, as as I age, and so this is, you know, this is one element of that. I think we all need to kind of step back from ourselves, you know, because everybody's focused on their thing and their, you know, their product, their device, whatever it is. But in the end, you know, we're all part of this bigger ecosystem of, you know, how do we age gracefully? right in the end right and so it's one component um you know i'm a consumer of information as you know you mentioned the aura ring i have my apple watch i have i have my son aware obviously but i you know and so i think you know the 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 future is how does this become a core component alongside many others in this kind of bigger race to understand how to live longer and healthier, you know, this idea of kind of health span versus lifespan, right? And clearly this ticks a few of those boxes, right? If you get the sunlight bit right, then you have a better chance to get the other things right. You know, and again, to go to Peter Atiyah's very, you know, interesting way of looking at kind of health 1.0, 2.0, and now 3.0. This is clearly part of a health 3.0 solution, which is forward-looking, anticipatory, um, personalized, um, well-engineered and, and accurate, and so on and so on and so on. So to me, you know, this kind of gets me excited when I think about it and I work on it. Um, and I'm part of this, this, this great team, you know, to work on these things. So that's the way I think of the future. I think of let's be part of this bigger picture and play some small role, but important role in that. As Rob, you do in, in many areas, right? You're obviously a core part of this. So you understand exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, absolutely. Uh, what you said is resonating with me with the idea of longevity. So I almost think that the sun aware is like the Swiss army life because it's like you said, check so many boxes. When you look at the hallmarks of aging or what we now perceive as the hallmarks mm. of aging inflammation, clearly it enables you to avoid inflammation at the skin level, the microbiome. Mm. We dictated that with the circadian rhythm and serotonin fascial injuries fascia attaches to the skin again you can see the particular uh, tie the idea of turning health switches on and turning off bad switches that manage and modulation i mean nothing in my mind exemplifies in a health detectable better than the sun aware and lastly believe it or not the vagus nerve now that may be a whole nother rabbit hole to go in However, when people are getting burned from the sun, they become too sympathetic and that becomes an unleveling on some needed nervous systems. So again, when you said it checks the box, it almost checks all of the boxes that we're referring to, especially mm -hmm. pediatia in the hallmarks of aging. Now that we said that, Sam, Greg alluded to the fact that something's coming out really soon. You have a breaking announcement. Let everybody know where I live, how and where they can get the SunAware product. Yeah, we just launched our US web shop, so people can actually get it from there. Uh, go to sunaware.com, that is S U N hyphen A hyphen W E A R dot C O M, sunaware.com. There you find the shop, you find more information. You also find the knowledge base with tons of information on UV protection and everything you want to know around sunlight. Uh, yep. And if you want to reach out to us, support at sunaware.com email address, please send us your ideas, your feedback. Uh, if you want to do research with it or anything, we're always happy to learn and always happy to hear from people. Let, let me let me add one thing there just for listeners. It is a play on words. Again, I mentioned the dear uh, founder, you know, our dear friend, Steve Kraft, who always likes to play with words. Uh, so sun aware, it sounds like sun aware, A-W-A-R-E. So it is about awareness of sun, but it's also Awareable, so it's W E A R. So don't confuse those two things. S U N hyphen A hyphen W E A R. Unaware. Um, and then we 
wanted Rob in, in, in connection with you to have your listeners who have taken their time and, and, and listened to us to have a chance to benefit from this. So maybe you want to share uh, a little uh, offering you're giving to your listeners. If anybody wants to use the code, it's Dr. Rob 23. Parting shot for me is um, what a, what a great, uh, experience to hang out with you guys to talk about something that's deeply meaningful to all of us and to some way help some of those listening and obviously many others not listening. That's really what this is all about. So um, anybody, anybody, you know, tuning in, thank you for taking time. You know, time is a very precious and very scarce resource. So take, thanks for taking the time to listen to us. And we really hope that this will uh, help you in some way. Some of the information we provided, obviously, if you have an experience to, to use this, this product um, and beyond. And wishing you lots of sunny days ahead. Yeah, also from my side, uh, thank you very much, Rob, for these very interesting discussions and also for giving us the opportunity to talk about something that has been really important to us over the last I mentioned it six and a half years. So thank you. It's been my pleasure. It's been in, very interesting and exciting. Um, Dr. Rob Silverman, Dr. Sam Welton, Dr. Greg Robbins, as Jim Rome once said, take care of your body. It's the only place you have to live. Proven health alternatives.